If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we ask that you turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 4. John, chapter 4. Uh, and as you turn there, I ask, as always, uh, your prayers as your pastor. And uh, finding what the Lord would have us to do, always, I'd rather be in the Lord's will than, uh, than anything else. Uh, John, chapter 4 beginning in verse uh, 29. One more thing, y'all pray uh, for um, Brother Kenny and uh, his wife. They're trying to find the Lord's will, and I guess either way, they're coming to look at a house this weekend in uh, Dover. He'll probably preach for me Sunday, and if you live on that, which none of you do on that end of Dover, uh, south part of the county, it is where Karen Richardson lives. Uh, that's right in front of Millie's mom and dad's house. And all her brothers live there for years now. But it's right in that area. And so you pray. And um, I know the Lord will take care of it. Uh, John chapter 4 verse 29. We're just going to read one verse for our text. Uh, or two verses for our text this morning. Uh uh, verse 28, I'm sorry, verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all the things ever I did is not this the Christ. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank you for the church that you've provided for us to pastor, Lord. Uh, we pray for your strength in the last days that we might stand true to your word as the, uh, as the world pushes us toward compromise, Lord, that we would not. Uh, God, we pray that you would help us this morning to preach your word, Lord, that you would come in this place and that you would uh, fill the house with your presence. And Lord, we pray for the lost, Lord, that you might save them this morning by your eternal grace and we'd be faithful to give you the praise. And the glory and the honor for it all, for it is in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now, from before going back and uh, looking at the Samaritan's woman encounter with Christ, I want you to see that she was excited at the end. She ran back to town and said, let me tell you about a man that's told me everything I ever done. Now, I don't know about you, but just in the flesh, I sure wouldn't have been excited about that. I wouldn't have been happy. I wouldn't have been glad. I wouldn't. But you know what made the difference? Is in by that well today, that day she met Christ. Uh, you know what? When you meet Christ sincerely, uh, you'll be so excited you don't know what you'll do. Uh, you'll be so happy in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ that you're willingly confessing sin. You know, we live in a day and age where most people uh, don't even really know how, how the Lord saves people. First of all, the Bible says that He calls you from death unto life. In other words, you can't have faith and trust. No, that's a big thing today. Just trust Jesus. Well, you can't have faith and trust in your living. Uh, a dead man can't have faith in anybody. He can't even have faith people carry him out to the boneyard. But you know what? Uh, when, when, once we're alive, we can have faith and hope. And then you know what was the first message? Both John the Baptist and the Lord Jesus Christ, their first message was the very same. Repent. See, uh, people that are saved repent. And that's what this woman uh, was doing. And, and you know what I found? This is just as true as the other lost people don't. The lost people either like to hide their sin or it makes them mad when you preach on it. One of the two, after 26 years, I've certainly seen that. You'll, you'll get one result or the other out of, out of people that are lost. And you know why? They're dead. Brother Jerry, you ever wondered why you're preaching? Uh, some people seemingly have no response whatsoever. Well, dead people can't move, dead people can't hear, and dead people can't react. There's a reason they do that. He that have an ear, let him hear. Right. And, and so we see then uh, that this woman, uh, her life was transformed by these events with Christ. Now, uh, we're going to go back and take a look, and, and you turn back uh, 
maybe one page, I don't know how your Bible is, um, is laid out, but we're going to go back to John 4.4 4, uh, to begin a reading again. But I want you to see, nowhere in this text does Jesus invite her to say a sinner's prayer. You know, the older I get, the more I believe that's the most devious thing that ever came out of hell. Because the thing of it is, it's just not in the Bible. And, and you know, uh, this is in the Bible. Trust and believe and ye shall be saved. But there's nothing about the sinner's prayer in there, is it? And, and, and so we find then that time and time again, uh, we find this Samaritan woman, we find Paul on the road to Damascus, we find Lydia at the cellar of purple, and never ever do they ever say, invite Jesus into your heart. So salvation then is completely a work of God and has nothing to do with man. And if anything less, you may not be saved. Uh, Gospel of John chapter 4, we're going to move back to verse 4 now. And the Bible says, uh, and he must needs go through Samaria. Now, have you ever wondered why? Well, I'll tell you the reason he must needs go uh, through Samaria. To Samaria, hey, there was a Samaritan, a Samaritan woman that was the elect of God, and he had to deal with her. That's why he went through Samaria. Now, the more, the more unusual thing, and I believe that's why it's written out this way, just like the woman at the well, she wasn't shooting uh, rubber. Uh, she was, they, had no, they had no dealings with the Samaritan. So he was going into a very sinful area to meet a very sinful woman. You know, um, there's neighborhoods when I when I worked home health in Clarksville, uh, there was neighborhoods that I would go into about nine or ten in the morning, just because I knew that's when it was safe. That was kind of how Samaria was. It was a rough kind of town. And, 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 and so he's there, and he arrives at the well, and he's waiting on his water. But what he's really waiting on is, is the woman of Samaria to come up and have real dealing with her so she might know whom Christ is. And so he's there, uh, verse 5, then cometh, to, then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour, and for us that would be about noon. Very hot, very humid, which that's a dry environment, I don't say it's humid, uh, and he sat on the well. Verse 7, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Now, uh, certainly he probably was thirsty. Uh, and after that hot, dry journey of the day, he probably was a little thirsty. But see what the real issue was this. He wanted to involve her in some conversation. Uh, he wanted to show her some compassion. He wanted to show her that he was different than the rest. That, that he wasn't like like the majority of the Jews. And, and he, so he just simply said, give me the drink. Now, when you're out in the grocery store or you're at your place and work and you're doing your thing, uh, do you ever just strike up a conversation with somebody? Uh, you know, uh, there's, uh, it, it, because of COVID, everybody that walks in the building has to have their temperature taken and you have to ask them those general questions. And, you know what? Uh, I didn't know half the people that work 3 to 11, and I saw it as an opportunity, and I said, I'll take those temps. Now they call me by my first name and ask how I'm doing and what's been going on. See, you, you create an opportunity. And, and you know what? This is what I found. If you don't create an opportunity, you'll never have one. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we want to say, well, the Lord will work it all out, and I understand that, and he will. But you know, there, there's this too you have to deal with. The Bible says this. Some had 30, some had 60, and some had 100. And it really comes down 
uh, to this, how hard are you going to work? And, and so he initiates this conversation. He says, I want something to drink. Verse 8, for his disciples were going away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto them, unto him. How is it that you, thou being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now, I want you to see, instead of saying, and, and if you think about this, remember when, um, when Joseph was coming in, I think it was Joseph, and he asked, he asked his wife to be, maybe an Isaac, and he said, give me, give me some water. And that woman began to run. He said, I'll get you some water. Uh, was it Rebecca or Rachel? I can't remember what. I think it was Rachel. And she said, more than that, I'll, I'll, I'll water your stock. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's the attitude. See, th there was a difference in those two women, weren't there? And, and, you know, even though they were cousins, they never met before. She didn't know that that was her cousin. She didn't know him from Adam. Right. And he, she said, yeah, I'll do it. And, and, you know, all, that, that's the difference between someone that is lost and someone that is saved. One is eager to serve the Lord, and one is not. This woman was dead in her trespasses and in her sins. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, so she did not know it. You look very carefully. If you did know the gift of God, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is, that saith unto thee, so she did not know the gift of God, which is salvation, and she did not know the person of Christ. You know what? That's a mess to be in this morning. You don't hear that preached on uh, much anymore, but I tell you what, if you don't know God, and you don't know, uh, and if you don't know Jesus, you're in a bad shape. The Bible says, if, Christ, if God don't intervene in fact, you are in an everlasting hell. That, that's very sobering, is it not? Yeah. Don't hear much preaching on hell anymore. And in addition to the misery of the fire and, and the lake of fire, not only separation from God, which we, don't, we, we can't even comprehend, it, but see, separated from everyone else, too. All you have is your memories to live on. And as the rich man found, that wasn't much. And uh, so we, we find then that this, the, this woman lacked those two things for sure. And he said, if you knew who you were dealing with, you'd have asked of him, and he would have given the living water. Water that's alive, water that will do something. Now you talk about getting a, a church of Christ or, uh, fired up, man, they love this. But see, the baptismal hole is not the living water. The living water is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, a personal relationship initiated by him and not initiated by you that you're his and he's yours. That, 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 is, the, that is the difference. And so he says, wait a minute, you don't know what the living water is even about. You don't know who I am. Verse 11, the woman says unto her, uh, excuse me, to him, Sir, thou knowest, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, from whence then hast thou this living water? See, she, she wasn't interested, she was even making fun of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we would say, never ever would I make uh, fun of the Lord Jesus. Well, would you? When you say, yeah, it's him and baptism. You're making fun of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you say, yeah, it's him, but I've got to receive the Holy Ghost. You know what? What you're doing is uh, making fun of him. Saying you don't even have nothing to draw with. You, you know what that really meant? You're inadequate. You know why all these other things are going on today that cause themselves the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? They're saying Christ is inadequate. Saying that he don't have the stuff that he needs to accomplish the very mission that he did accomplish 
on the cross of Calvary. Um, verse 12, he asked him a question. Or, excuse me, she asked him a question. Are thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Now, uh, he began, she begins, and like every lost person I've ever seen, she begins to question who Christ is. Now, uh, I was a 12-year-old boy when the Lord saved me, but I had memories prior to that. And you know, in my sinner's mind, you know what I really thought? That I was pretty good. Uh, you know, you had Judy and James Dale to be compared with, so I was in good shape. <laughs> right? Uh, and so uh, I felt pretty good about myself and didn't even know. You know what, what he said? Uh, I think the church uh, at Laodicea and did not know they were blind and naked and one more and who knows. See, you can be in a mess and not even know it. If you don't believe that, and, and say, people, this is true for you. What about David? What about David? He said, oh, 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 kill this man. Who is he? And the preacher boy says, I was the man. So you get so far from God that you no longer understand spiritual things. That was David's issue. Now, certainly he made his mask with Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite. But the real thing was this. And what caused all of that, he was far from God. And every one of us that are saved can get in the same kind of shape. And you know what? You think you got everything all hit up real good. Listen, you know what? It'll break out on you like chicken pox. And, and so we see then as the Lord's people that, um, that we, uh, we never question who God is. Now let me tell you one more thing about my boys and uh, would you? And my sister did this too. My boys wanted the chicken pox. Now that sounds foolish, don't it? They, I mean, they look every day because they do. They've been exposed to them. Some other kids we've been around, and finally, when that little bump come up, they were just tickled to death. Uh, and what does that say? I think we like sin, don't we? And I think to some extent we even like the results of sin. Now, poor old Sarah had one bump, and we weren't even sure she had it. And then she's had the shingles, I know, once and maybe twice since then. So she definitely had them, and certainly got the short end of the stick compared to her brothers who wanted them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, this body enjoys sin very, very much. And so in her sinful condition, what she was really doing is questioning the deity of Christ. Verse 13, And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this well shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of this water that I shall give, him shall never thirst again. Now you get that in your mind, if you don't ever get anything else out of this message, there's your security of the believer, there's your eternal salvation. The Bible says he will never thirst again. So the question comes, have you got you a good drink or have you not? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sin? Are you standing uh, still on the outside of the periphery going, what is that boy talking about? It's one way or the other, is it not? You can't be both. You're either on or you're off. And, and so we find that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ teaches her how secure and safe we are in the arms of Jesus, even in this. Uh, the rest of the verse says, But the water that I shall give shall be in him a well of water springing up to everlasting life. The woman saith unto her, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Now, I want she, she seems to be getting the picture because she says, uh, yeah, give me some of this water that I didn't even come here to seek. But you know what? I don't know how Samaria was. Like I say, from what I read, it's a pretty rough place to live. But she 
He was blowing him off. It, it looked real good, didn't it? Just give me something. You know, that's when some of you, you, you knock on those doors, and oh, I've been up and down all these streets, probably not as much as I should, and you know what? You can't find a lost person on Dahlia Street. You can't find one out in Accord, I mean, uh, out Winds Ferry. And you know what they're really doing? They're blowing you off. They don't want to give time to think about eternity. They don't want to give time to think, do I really have a relationship with Christ? They don't want to give time to that. You know why people are so busy today? And you know, it really is true. I'm busier now than I've ever been in my life. That's what the devil wants you to know. Because you know what it does? You can say what you want to. It takes trust. It takes time to think about eternal things. It takes time to consider the destiny of your never dying soul. It takes time. And, and so I really believe that the Samaritan woman here, she was not, she was not interested with what Jesus had to say. She's like kind of, okay, I'll go through this, and maybe you go on that way, and I'll go on this way, and we'll have it all done. And that was her desire. She was not interested in Christ. It was just like old Paul on his road to Damascus. He had no interest. You know what? He he had <laughs> He wasn't seeking God. Christ was seeking him. That's the real difference, isn't it? Do you, uh, I think I counted up one time. There are 10 or 12 Southern Baptist churches in this county. And you know what? Today, they're preaching the exact opposite that I'm telling you. They're preaching, you just come to Jesus. Well, how do dead people make? How do dead people approach unto Christ? They're dead. It's an impossibility. So I ask you this morning, are you living unto Christ or, you, or do you remain dead unto this world? That's the only question that matters. If you live to be 106, when it comes down to it, have you considered spiritual things? You know what I've found with people is this. They don't even want to consider spiritual things. The greatest... Uh, the greatest false church from the beginning was the Catholic Church. They are not Christian people. They do not love the things of Christ. And you know how I can tell that? It all comes down to what they can do. What they what what they're going, what they're going to accomplish. Now, I don't really know all their stuff, but I, I know they have infant baptism, and that's not taught in the scriptures. And I know when they get a certain age, they have some kind of ceremony, something when they join the church, but that's just a laid out little, almost like we think of as party. And then for the rest of the life, they give money and things to the church, maintaining a salvation that they never had to start with. And it's been like that ever since. You know why? They're like the Samaritan woman. They wanted something they could do. They wanted to go through the motion and put Jesus on his way, and then they didn't have to consider how depraved they really were. And that's what she wanted to do. Because we'll get to her level of depravity in just a minute. So she makes go, she makes this statement, oh, I want some of this. Verse 16. Gets down to the sin issue. And Jesus says unto her, Go call thy husband. And and come hither. And the woman answered, getting down to where she lived. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus saith unto her, Thou was well said. Thou hast no you said, I have no husband, for thou hast five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that says thou truly. And, and, and so, this is where we get down to the scary part. This is get down to where lost people ought to wake up. He knows everything you've ever done. Mm -hmm. Saved people, he knows everything you've ever done. Before you were saved, and after you're saved, 
He still knows everything you've done. And you know what? For me, at least, that would lead me in distress and say, oh, Lord, what can I do? Well, this is the only answer I can give you. The only hiding place is this, is beneath the blood of Christ. What makes God the Father not see it? The blood of Christ. What makes us different than other people? The blood of Christ. What is our only saving solace? The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's it. And I have nothing to offer you this morning besides that because there is no other according to the scriptures. So if he knew her sinful lifestyle inside and out. Verse 19. Now she says like she's in trouble. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. Now, he moved up a little bit on, on her stage. As you know, she's trying to run him off in the beginning. And then she, she gave him the old religious thing. Ooh, yeah, I want some of this water. And now she's saying, I perceive thou art a prophet. Now, don't be impressed with her words. Because you know how that word is also translated? Preacher. You know what? We, I took my other feet one day down in the Ridge, Tennessee Ridge. And uh, this boy came over to me. Young boy, he's probably older than me. And me and mother were sitting there eating. And he said, you're a preacher, ain't you? I said, yes, sir. And remember, remember on that night of the denial, three different times they came to pick him kids out of here. I can tell how he talked. You were with him. Could that be said about you? And so it wasn't impressive that she says you're a preacher or you're a prophet um, because she still didn't know Christ. She didn't know, she didn't know nothing about him. She didn't know who he was. Uh, verse 20, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem, that was their big difference between the Samaritan and the full blood Jews. One of them said Jerusalem, one of them said on top of that mountain. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So she gets down to this. She goes, this is the real deal, Jesus. You're one of them, and I'm one of them. You know what? I want to tell you what the real deal is this morning. You're one or the other. You're either saved or you're lost. There's no in between. You either belong to Christ or you don't belong unto him. You know what? This morning, don't you consider election in this. You consider your, your own state. Do you know him or do you not? Are you near unto Christ and, 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 and you're going to understand and know who he is or do you not? And, and, and so this woman, dealing with the Almighty in the flesh, she goes, I'm going to tell you the real difference. You know, you know what the real difference is? Either you're saved and you follow him at ever the cost, or you're lost and you're on your way to a devil's hell. Two ways. And she knew that. You're a Samaritan. I'm a Jew. It's always going to be like that. No, no. Christ can come in and change everything. Can he not? You don't have to remain how you are. Just, you know, she was born a Samaritan, and I was born a sinner. But you know what? It didn't have to stay that way because Christ intervened. Verse 21, And Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me that the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, ye you know not what. She's going through the most of what she. I don't know exactly how their worship beside location, how it differed. But she was doing one thing and said, you know, you know. Pretty much how Lydia was, was it not? The Bible says she worshiped God. But what her real need was was her heart to be opened. That was Lydia's real hang-up, was it not? Lydia was a good Jew. I bet every time the temple's door was open, she was down there. But that didn't make any difference to her soul situation. And so the Lord kind of lays it out there and said, 
You know, you don't even know what you worship, and you don't know me intimately. You don't understand who I am. You worship, you know not what. We know that we worship salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in his spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. Not Jews, not Samaritans. He seeks true worshipers. Are you true worshiper of Christ? Do you know him intently? That is the question this morning. Verse 24, God is a spirit, a spirit, Holy Ghost spirit. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Can't have, you can't have one without the other. So people that say, yes, it's a relationship with Christ, but I have to maintain it. See, they've missed one of them. They've missed truth. People that says, yeah, you got to be saved, but you got to be baptized. They're missing the truth, aren't they? And you know what? I'll have to say this. It probably needs to be fixed here. <laughs> because, see, the, the Holy Ghost won't ever validate falsehood. It, it's outside the realm of God, so it's outside the, the conditions of the Holy Ghost. Is it not? If, if the Bible's consistent, it's consistent, right? You never see anywhere God the Father uh, <laughs> bless. <laughs> Even a half truth, and so that that would be an impossibility. Verse twenty-five: The woman saith unto him, "I know that Messiah coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things." And Jesus saith unto her, "I that speak unto thee am." He had to reveal who he was. Not just about Christ, but I am Christ. I'm the answer to your sin. I have taken care of it. It will all be gone in my name. I am he. He introduced himself to her. She didn't introduce himself to her, to him. You know what? He already knew her. He said, yeah, you've got five husbands. I know who you are. But he had to introduce himself to her. Mm -hmm. Isn't it a wonderful thing today to think about back upon the day that he introduced himself to them? <laughs> I'm Jesus. I'm the answer to your sin. And, and, and what, what a wonderful, glorious day, day that was for me. I failed him miserably at times, but I've never, ever been the same since. And I give him the glory and the honor for that because that's where it lies. And upon this, verse 27, and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Why? Because she's a Samaritan. Yet no man said, what seekest thou her, or what talkest thou with her? Now notice he saw her and he talked to her. That, 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 that is how he said. And the woman then left her water pot and went her way unto the city. And saith to the man, come see, come see a man which told me all things ever I did is not this the Christ. See, Christ, when he said, I am he, the one that speaketh to thee, I am he, it changed everything. You know what? She's no, she's no longer, she's no longer shamed. She went and said, listen, this man knows everything I did. That he knows things about me that you don't. And you know, the Lord, the Lord works just that way. Isn't it a marvelous thing you don't have to be a Jew? You know, you, they would take other people in, but you have to submit to circumcision and their law. But most of them looked down on those people. To be a Jew, you had to be a Jew. Isn't it a wonderful thing that you do not have to be a genetic Jew to know Christ? Isn't it a wonderful thing that we don't have to obey the law. Now the law is our schoolmaster. And it will teach us about sin. But isn't it a wonderful thing. That we don't have to go down there to the temple. And you know I'd be down there every day. As some turtle does. Wouldn't you? Every day. And, 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 and so. 
what we need to rejoice in is salvation if you have it. Now I ask you intently this morning, those who say they've been saved for years and years and years, and those that don't understand salvation at all, uh, I, I would point you to Christ this morning. You know, it never, ever hurts to say, am I yours? Do I belong to you? Because see, one, one thing or the other, you'll get good news, you'll get bad news, right? But you know what? Even the bad news is good news. Amen. If you understand you're, you're lost, that's way ahead of most Amen. people. Yeah. Do you know it? Have you been saved? 